again. <laughs> so this is how to install 3.8. I'm starting the recording. So you go to your computer and you can get there from you know here. There's a lot of places. Sometimes there's a desktop shortcut to your computer. Anyway, you get to your computer and then you open up your C drive and what you want to do is you first you want to do this if you're getting 3.8 for old version of Skype from oldapps.com and you also want to have your file well even if you don't I mean this do this with your current version of Skype first and, and if you want to keep it why not you know you might want to so just do this anyway and uh, go to your program files Find your Skype folder, and we're going to do this with your current version of Skype first. Then, after you install Skype 3.8 or an old any old version that you want, uh, where's my Skype? I'm in the wrong program file. Yes, is <laughs> I wasn't watching here. Uh, I actually have a 64-bit Vista, so I have uh, x86. Okay, you find your Skype folder. And you see how I have mine? I have every version I could possibly ever dream of wanting. Skype, whatever, the current version, That's a, this is normally all you have. But I have 3.1, 4.2, 4.2 a copy, 5.0, 5.3, 5.5, 3.0. .5. So I have all these different versions of Skype backed up, which is safe from automatic upgrade. But you have to do it in a certain way. If you install your 3.8 in a folder called 3.8, it will not be protected. You have to, you have to let whatever happens in your program files, in the main Skype folder. If just let it do whatever it does, you're going to make a copy of all the versions that you want after downloading. By right clicking, hey, where's copy? What did I do wrong? There we go. Copy. Right click on it. Copy paste right into uh, you know a blank area of your program files and paste it right back in yeah you often have to allow oh this might it's gonna say a copy of yeah it's going to say a copy of or something like that skype copy depending on your version anyway <laughs> it'll have those two words in it and uh, what you do then is you rename it you know, and lately I've been telling people, just leave the word copy in it so you don't get confused. I think my current version is 5.5. .5. So first you do it with your current version. And after, I'm hoping my voice isn't getting wonky. It's after, not. Good. After you... Uh, uh, successfully install 3.8 and there is a couple steps you need to do before you can successfully do that but once you do install it don't install it here install it in your let it install normally which would mean that after you install it inside of the oh look at that <laughs> well after you install it I'm just gonna pretend that one of these is my regular Skype folder Inside of the phone folder is the actual application. Oh, don't do that to me. There we go. <laughs> so you're looking for, usually there's just one. We'll ignore this. Delete. OK. So th whatever version you just installed, you should be able to mouse over this or right click and view properties to confirm before you make a copy which version it is. See, you can see file version there. So I'm going to back out of this again. You're doing this with your main Skype folder before you go and get a different version of Skype and also after installing this will change. After I install 3.8 and I go inside of here I will be able to mouse over that little application with the logo with the blue and white Skype logo with the white S in it it will tell me that it's now 3.8 after I install it. That's when you right click and make a copy just like we did before. I don't know why it's doing that. Okay, copy and again click and paste right back into your program folders and this time it'll be 3.8. From the copy you do the same thing. You go to copy and you rename it whatever 
uh, version, in this case 3.8, just like I did with this one. So this, this could be, we'll just pretend that it's after installing 3.8 and we go through the same process a second time and we make that 3.8. Demo. Delete. <laughs> you don't write those. Anyway, <laughs> that's for me to remember. So, uh, nah, I'll cancel it. So um, you write, you right click and copy on the main Skype folder, paste back into the program files, name it, and then to make a desktop shortcut, all you have to do is go in, <laughs> is go into, let me pick a good one, this should have one, go into inside of it, inside of the phone folder. When you go to make it on my desktop, I'll go ahead and show my desktop real quick. Okay, so you want a desktop version of whatever version you want a desktop shortcut of whatever Skype version that you want. I have them all. I say have it all, right? So in order to make sure that those actually open up in, uh, in the right place and not in the main Skype folder, you make sure that you create them from the copy, the backup copy. This one is in my program files in not my Skype folder, but my Skype 5.5. So I created this shortcut from the copy, from the backed up copy of whatever version it is. So, oof, thanks for asking. <laughs> Any questions related to that really quick? You've got instructions for that on the blog. Yes, right? I do. So that's a lot of steps to remember. It, it is a lot of steps to remember. I'll, I'll go find it on my blog, actually. Um, you put the link in there. Right. I have my resource links I haven't given to the, you know, guys, I always give you all source links to, to get all the stuff I'm talking about. Um, so i got to send that to you into the chat. And then after I do that, you can... Uh, go up to file and save the chat log. But if we, um, if we, uh, you guys know about the search on my blog? It's right, currently, I hope it, I move it up into the dark area, I mean up into the upper right, but right now my search box is above my picture in my sidebar, at the top of my sidebar above my picture. Um, here is the getting started guide, and I'll just go ahead and pop that into the chat box right now chat box. That's the getting started guide. It will continue to improve. If you bookmark that and keep coming back to it, it actually links to a lot of content and a lot of steps. Just keep coming back to it. All of these links, step one. Okay, make sure if you're on my team to get in my team room. Um, step one, make sure, let's see, to read this. So that will open up in another tab. When you're done getting, you know, being sent all over my blog from here, you know, step, you know, make sure to come to my training. Step two, get into my team Skype room. Step three, prepare uh, your Skype before starting to use Message Magic. Um, uh, Message Magic 10 days, let's see, how to get all your questions answered about Message Magic. So this Getting Started Guide will, con will continue to be perfected. Um, but the best thing to do is when you're done with that, just start closing tabs and get back to the Getting Started Guide or bookmark it or whatever you do to get back here. And then go take the next step. I believe we found last night in step three and four, uh, 50,000 Skype users a night and installing Skype 3.8. Install error, the fix for that. So read step three and four, and uh, it will it will tell you these steps. Let's see if I can okay, find. Three it. people still have their hand up. Oh, okay. Uh, let me get back there. Want to take real quick? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's see. Attendee. I don't know what order they put up their hand, but in alphabetical order, it's Carla, Erica, and Georgia. Georgia's had her hand up forever. Go ahead, Georgia. Georgia, you still have your question? Jay, wait too long. Okay, I'll be back to you, Georgia. I don't want to run out of time. I love answering questions. 
Let's see, Erica and Carla. Carla's a new face. I'm going to give her first priority. Sorry, Erica. Go ahead, Carla. You got the mic. Hi, Carla. Say hi. Tahiti <laughs> She's not talking either. Okay. Carla, I'll come back to you. Go ahead, Erica. <laughs> Hi, Erica. Thunk, thunk. There she Hi, is. Hi, <laughs> I like your email address, Skype with Julie, at your domain. <laughs> so, anyway. Okay, I'm back. Sorry. Hi. I just hung up on the phone. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. I had a question about something you said earlier in this in the uh, conversation. Uh huh. Um, one of the one of the um, things you talked about was permission-based marketing or permission-based list, and it says you know you you asked do you have permission to send a Skype message, and then it you know the question was did you add contact before send message according to the Skype terms of service right, and so we can only send a message to somebody who's a who is a contact. But if we don't have them their permission to add them as a contact, how can that be permission based? So I'm just I should I have my quite, I, I shut down my get magic. the details of the terms of service there. Like I, I got the impression that we're not allowed to add someone unless they know us and we know that I understand them, the confusion. But, yeah. Yeah. So Yeah. So um what it is is that you can add them as a contact first. I'm going to see if I can find my pictures here. Uh, I, I don't have my message magic up, but I should have lots of pictures. And I'm going to see if I can find the image that I'm looking for. Basically, in your message magic under activities, um, once you've selected, you've loaded, you've selected, your third step is uh, user actions. Let's see, do we see Skype here? Yeah. Um, you can add to contact and you should and when you add to contact you should send them a custom add contact request message rather than that boring default one right and that's where we put the birthday message but right. I'm still just questioning how we can send that first message if because we don't that's allowed message. once you add them as a contact it's okay theoretically right I mean according to the the letter of the law <laughs> Skype's TOS, Terms of Service, um, you know, you can add them and then send the messages. So you should add them and you should then later on schedule follow-up with the people that you just added. Send them another message, send them a message for the first time. Uh, but the first quote-unquote message you send is just an add contact request. So some people are saying, uh, let's see if I can find my uh, message magic presentation shots maybe. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I don't know if I can find it, but um, you know, if let's see if this one keep profiles. I don't think it'll be this one, but let's see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, probably not. that's settings, isn't it? Yeah, okay, mm -hmm. that's not it. Um, but basically, right at the top, if you do, you happen to have your message magic open. I can walk you through no, through it verbally. Does anyone? We can change presenters. Well, I I understand <laughs> the, how to do this. The message. I, I yeah. I was just questioning the way you describe the terms of service and the way it's like I'm confused now. Do we add them as a contact first? But yet, okay, the here's the thing. Service, say, we can't we add them as a contact. Yeah, stranger, if so you clear. add them as a contact, you are forced to send them a message. That's normal. It is allowed. Okay. Okay. So you're requesting for them to be a contact. You have to do that somehow. But the other function is to start sending messages to them, right? And you don't want to start sending messages to them before you add them as a contact, which someone in the Skype room specifically asked. She said, that's my normal behavior. I want to chat with them for a while first. Well, that's okay if they're adding you first, you know, to chat with them for a while to see if you want to add them. And they may do that with you. They may chat with you. They haven't added you, but they're allowed to because you added them first. So one of you have to add each other before legally by the you know, I mean, you guys, people can do whatever they want, and they break the terms of service all the time. Um, but, you know, 
it doesn't hurt if the message isn't offensive. But anyways, yeah, it's when you add a contact, it is different. You're sending, in fact, if you do this in 3.8, you'll notice it's a very different look than in Skype 5. Um, it, in Skype 5, it's actually in your chat window with him. It's in the chat, it's at the top of the chat history. In 3.8, it disappears. It goes away. I used to teach long ago, um, you know, when Message Magic was first created and I was the first trainer in 2008, I used to tell people, send, you know, put the message in there, add them as a contact, and then send the same message because it's in a different window. So when they accept you as a contact, it's just an event in 3.8. Well, in 5, see, I used to say that, but everyone was on 3.8. Now it would actually be in there twice. It would be in their chat message twice. So I would edit it slightly and then send a message. So add a contact, send a custom message as an add contact request message, which is how your, your, your uh, default settings are set in Message Magic. You can, uh, you can change that, but it's set so that you have to send a message. Just be careful what you send, right? But yeah, I learned that the hard way, remember? Yeah, America <laughs> did. Oh, and you didn't even mean to. But anyway, uh, but anyway, that's why we have people use prospecting secondary accounts while you're learning message magic. Um, so, uh, yeah, you understand the difference now, Erica? Well, I, yeah, I think so. It's like, okay, if we add the contact with, with a short message that we make fun, um, yeah. <laughs> I was just trying to compare it to the old you know, the, the regular email marketing where if you add somebody to your email autoresponder without their permission, you're technically spamming them with an email because they haven't, quote, confirmed the email address. Right. So I was just trying to see how so that legally similar. compares with Skype. Yeah, it's similar with Skype, but you have to say, you have to send an ad contact request. They don't have any problem with that because otherwise nobody would be have contacts. <laughs> Okay. Right? It has to start. I mean, when you first get your Skype, you have no contacts. So you have to send an ad contact request. That's allowed. I don't, I don't have a sample of it. Shucks. Unless it's in one of these folders. Okay, Mr. that was Hatch. my question. Thanks. You're welcome. There we go. I found it. <laughs> <laughs> I can multitask. So yeah, um, a lot of people are saying, well, I want to chat with people first. But with a power tool that's sending out so many hundreds of ad contact requests, you want to leave it really generic, even though you might actually target using the profile data and the selecting and the filtering, you might actually target a good contact. You have to remember, some of those people are not in business. They are not networking. They are not using Skype for that. So you have to have the first message. It's going to everyone. So you have to have that first message be very gentle and very generic uh, and not talk about business or things like that. But after you've added them, I do the same thing with your messaging. But legally, you could now follow up and hit send message to those same people. So that, that's the thing. It's perfectly fine to add contacts. Let's just not send them a boring default message and write a customized, carefully written message. But uh, later on... careful that that first message isn't full of links and check out my opportunities. Yeah. Right? yeah. Um, and just, just for the record, you're free to use my Skype thingy anytime you need to for a demo. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> okay. Wow, we still have two minutes. Um, do you see any other questions I should answer? You've just got two hands. That, Georgia's hand is up, and it looks like she's active. Okay. And Georgia, are you ready? Again. Hi, Georgia. Say hi. Oh, Georgia. Nope, she doesn't want to talk. <laughs> okay. Okay, Georgia. I hope we you wrote your questions, and then we got good answers. Did she have questions she wrote down? And then there was Carla. Let's see, Carla. Carla, you, oh, did Carla leave? You know, see. She's gone. Okay. Okay. Well, that's it then, I guess, unless there's any question that you thought would be really good for me to squeeze in here in the last minute. No? No. Okay. Thanks, everybody.